Welcome to the Winning E-Commerce Experience Show, where it's all about creating a brand that your customers love so they keep coming back. This show is brought to you by DataQ. Your store experience begins with your homepage. DataQ improves your conversion rate up to 30% by showing each visitor a personalized homepage based on their interest. And now your host, Sharam Anver. All right. Hey, guys. Our guest today is an e-commerce consultant. He's the CEO of Silmo Heavy with years of e-commerce experience. Brad Maraz, great to have you with us. What's up? How are you? Great. Um, you just mentioned that you've hunkered down um, in sort of like a, outside the city right now. I think that sounded like a really good move. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, just uh, my wife and I just kind of jetted out about a month ago, uh, kind of when we started hearing hearing not fun things, um, and just kind of hunkered down because it's city cities are are interesting at the moment, and <laughs> rather not be in very dense populated things. So. Kind of yeah, what do you think like, about, I mean, uh, it, it's totally off topic, right? It's one thing which I've been thinking about a lot, like, you know, what's the end game of all of this? Like, do you think cities are going to be less cool and people are going to start doing more of this? We're going to start moving out? I think for uh, for now, yeah, like the immediate one, probably. Um, we already thought about it. Um, so that's definitely on top of our mind, but I mean, people are going to come back to it. There's just so much business as much as you can do remote stuff. I mean, there's so much business just done face to face still, you know, and I think that's, that's just, people still love cities. Um, people have that hunkering. Like I lived in New York for a bit, um, mm -hmm. originally from Philly back to Philly and I still love the city, but, um, it depends how you feel. Um, you know, cities still have a lot of schools. So a lot of young people live in cities. Um, Sure. The immediate right now is going to be interesting. Um, I think people are going to think about it, especially we don't know how long this is going to go. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, everyone's still talking about this new normal, but then the weird thing is that we don't, nobody has any idea what that looks like. It's sort of like normal is being redefined every week. Not, nothing's normal. It's day to day, right? So <laughs> we right now, like even in like, you know, for company wise, like we looked at, um, sort of what we have to do sort of long term, like immediate long term, and then you just live day to day basically right now. Um, as much as you want to plan, there's no plans because you have no idea. Every day is different. So, so what are the conversations you're having with your clients right now? I mean, I, I went through your site, you're working with some pretty cool brands. Um, I saw you even work with City uh, doing the bike thing, that, that sounded pretty cool. So, but that was a while, what, yeah, that was a while back. Um, uh, so I don't know where they're, they're obviously trying to figure out what, what they're doing, but most of our clients, I mean, it depends what industry you're in. If you're luxury fashion, that's tricky, right? If you're in fitness or anything that's essential, that's people just need it, mm -hmm. then you're fine. You're just having an interesting time at the moment. Right. Um, but you also got to be mindful of what your messaging looks like and, and what clients are pushing. You had this that first week, especially in the US, like that first two weeks was a problem. It, it was, people got this huge shock of like, yeah. well, what are we doing? And mm -hmm. nobody knew what's happening, right? Then you see the jobs go away. And, and, and now in the past week, like you can see people coming back up for air and going, all right, well, market sucks, mm -hmm. but we still got to do a job. We still got to take care of our families. So let's do business. And, you know, a lot of people who jumped into uh, even the restaurant, like look at restaurants, right? A lot of them just went curbside pickup and, and trying to survive that. Um, mm -hmm. So you have those kind of things like the, the people who can jump and pivot a little bit, they're doing okay. I mean, doing okay, relatively speaking, doing okay. Sure. Um, trying and surviving to is okay right, right now, right? Surviving is okay right now, right? Right. Yeah. So, so would you say that the biggest thing right now is, I, I guess just coming back to that, um, it makes sense that you really can't ask that question straight up because it really depends on what segment you're in. So maybe let's dive into these segments, right? So you've got the segments that are doing very badly and then you've got the ones which are, I think, doing extremely well with the grocery and the home equipment stuff. So let's not worry about those guys right now because I think they've got a different kind of set of problems. But let's talk about the middle segment where... Um, I don't know, maybe you're selling sports goods or clothes or apparel, things like that, which, which have taken a hit, but maybe not as significant as something like, say, travel. 
Um, what, you know, how much, because, you know, we just talked about how people need to be very, uh, like adapt really quickly. Um, what kind of conversations are you having with uh, customers in, in this segment? Like, are you talking about adapt immediately? Or are, you, are you thinking more about basics? Like, hey, just keep doing what you're doing and see how it goes. For us at the moment, for the client, for the for the some of the clients we have, um, we're just kind of doing what we're doing, kind of growing um, the business. And I think that so multiple things. Um, there's a stats that like um, uh, tops people's mm -hmm. like tops for for clothing mm -hmm. uh, went through the roof mm -hmm. on buying on buying <laughs> the bottoms did it right this is literally the reason you don't know if i'm wearing pants right now or not right um which is funny uh but that's the truth like people were just were like wow i need a shirt but i don't need anything else yeah, right like you know, yeah exactly right yeah. Like, right now. um uh, the other thing funny. is i think people had that initial shock but even talking to some of my younger employees they're like they're just bored so a lot of Amazon shopping, stuff like that. So the boredom happens, right? And then you get skinky. Like there's a whole bunch of the initial shock wear off. And I'm like, all right, well, we still got to take care of ourselves. Still got to buy stuff, stuff. So that's changed. So there's a lot of, you know, it changes week to week of where what people shop for. So to, to kind of, you know, that middle ground is you still got to push it. Now, I think you got to change your marketing tactics. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, how many messages have you gone? was like, this is what we're doing during COVID. It's like, all right, enough already. Everybody knows everybody's trying to survive and relax there. Um, but I think the marketing messages have to change. And some people didn't. I still get messages for Kijana, literally for office space in New York. <laughs> and I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, why would it's got to be stop? automated, right? Like, there's no way someone's actually I, setting this. I just don't understand. I'm like, the guy literally was emailing and going, hey, you know, if we came out, no, it's not automated. It was like, if you come out of this, you know, you need office space. I'm like, no, that, no, wrong audience there, bud. Um, I think, but overall, if you look at, um, I guess the, the third week of all this, um, if you look at actual advertisements on TV, and I know this is kind of ran about away, they change your advertising really quickly, right? So mm -hmm. you could see them changing to, oh, we have delivery, we have curbside pickup, like automatically just making commercials that like we can do that, um, which is awesome. And I think those adaptability to, to brands is amazing. So middle ground has to adapt. You know, some people were just not going to make it because it's just not needed. But I think there's, there's definitely room for, for the middle. So what about that guy who's got office space and he needs to sell? What would you say to him? Don't market. <laughs> I mean, it's the wrong timing, especially in New York. Who's going anywhere? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's like a really tough pill to swallow, right? I, I think it's the same thing with travel. Like, there's no way, like, I mean, you've got these huge companies with massive valuations. Um, and, you know, with all this marketing stuff ready to go. And I guess it's a little bit like, I don't want to say a little bit, but really all about em empathy right now. Like if you don't see yourself buying right. this product, then don't freaking market it right now and maybe think about right. it later. It's, you know, know your audience. Um, you know, it's, it's nobody actually knows what's going to happen. Like after kind of stuff are opens, do we go back? Do we not back? Somebody like me, yeah, we have an office in Philly gonna rethink it right mm -hmm. um i don't know I, I just it's it's silly sometimes yeah i know it's um but i think the adaptability thing has been really cool i've seen some really interesting examples of companies doing um like even even with pricing uh i saw this one example where i think it was like this icelandic supermarket where you know how when you go to supermarkets when you buy one product you get one price, but if you buy five, you get a discount. Yep. They flip that around so that if you buy one hand sanitizer, it's like, I don't know, two bucks. But if you buy two, it's 95. Yes. I've seen that. Like that was I've awesome. I've seen that. That's that amazing. Like, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Right. And all of a sudden th this, yeah, it just changes the whole thing. Instead of just putting sides, you can have one. No, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Cause like this whole thing about like, don't panic buy, don't do this, don't do that. Like, it doesn't work. Um, so like I found that that was genius. Just like thinking about how can you align sort of like, yep. I think pricing is, is, is marketing as well. So you, there's so many levers that you can pull 
to sort of really connect with people during crisis. Like people were sharing that image like left and right on social media. Like, oh my God, this mm -hmm. is so smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my favorite was actually some, uh, I know some, I have some friends in the bar and restaurant world and some of them were basically changing up how they do it. So they're in New York, they were like, well, we can deliver a whole gallons of just drinks pre-made for you. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is like, give you a uh, free toilet paper and Cheetos, if you order oh. this many. <laughs> so everybody's trying to play that game, but like a lot of restaurants, if you think about it, right, they all have the products and just toilet paper, paper towels, all the stuff, they're not using it right now. Mm -hmm. So why not become part of that? So there's a whole bunch of things like Panera Bread is doing some grocery stuff right now that you can buy from. Um, right. There's a lot of those kind of brands that just like, well, let's change it up and see what happens. What are the areas that like, so someone, let's say a small business entrepreneur listening right now who's thinking, well, my sales have dropped. I haven't really thought too much about um, doing some changes, but this sounds interesting. There are so many ways that you can change, right? Like you can look, change up your pricing, you can change up your product, you can change up your messaging. What are the, like, you know, how would you prioritize that? Like what kind of advice would you give someone saying, uh, like, how do I adapt? What do I do? Huh. So the way we look at it is obviously the media is like making sure you can survive, right? So looking mm -hmm. at your cost cutting and things like that, but also look at your projects, look at your projects that, you kind of put on back burner that could be brought up that will make sense right now. But look at also all the little tiny things that you could have that that makes sense. So like example is exactly the restaurant thing, right? Like they're like, well, we have this product and we can't sell it. We can't use it right now. Why not package it up and just, you know, sell it as a, as a survival mode. So I think people have to get a little bit more innovative and think out, outside of the box when you do it problem is like what we discussed earlier is like there's some go-getters that just go do it mm -hmm. and say screw it i need to survive this i'm gonna go do it and then there's some people just going freaked out going i don't know what to do um yeah and that's a problem you have to you have to get that shock over especially in the leadership roles right it's an initial shock where you got to stop and go all right what can i do in my business or do i have to have my business like do i just shut it down yeah, I mean, that's a legit route. It's, it's, a, it's a painful one, but like it's a valid option rather than just dying slowly. Um, hopefully- well, dying slowly, but also like taking in loans, taking a thing to try to survive the next few months and then what? Right, right. I mean, I guess then it just comes down to how would you decide which side you fall on? Like, would you just look at it in terms of product? So if I'm really selling something which I probably don't think I can sell, like say New York office space, then you're probably more likely to just stop right now. Um, how would you right, you can, you can, right. I mean, real estate is just gonna take a hit. Um, you know, you'll get, the weird part of this is like, your home prices are gonna drop. People don't really, are taking houses off the market, mm -hmm. but then also your rates for mortgages are very low. Like, what do you do, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Some people are investing in that. It's like, there's a weird market right now. Um, but real estate agents have started doing virtual tours and, and things like yes. that, which is happening, right? Um, same thing with dealerships, like dear, some dealerships are open, car dealerships, but they can deliver your car. Yeah, like I, I saw this um, one feed um, on my LinkedIn where this real estate agent literally got the owner of a house he wanted to sell to take a video of the house because he couldn't go over yeah. and he sold it. Um, yeah. like they did such a beautiful job with it that yeah like I guess again it's just like if you can think of some way to get this message online and then people can consume it so really it's about finding an effective way to get your message out exactly I mean this is you know a crazy health crisis and it is but imagine this without internet without the current tools that we all have I know <laughs> I, like, I don't know how people would have survived this without like the internet I think they did like I mean, the Spanish flu, it's, I, I haven't even read up enough about like what life was like then, but the fact that um, you can actually get quite a bit done from the internet is just insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so. One of the scary things I think for most people, just back to the topic of how do people adapt, is that, yeah, so you've got the go-getters who go and do that, do whatever they need to do to survive. But I think one of the hangups is people don't want to sound like they're being opportunistic during a tragedy, right? 
Um, sure. I've seen this quite a lot where people are like, look, I, I really want to send this email out, but I don't want to make it look, um, I mean, how, well, how would you respond to that? I mean, clearly they do need to do so something, two, but. Yeah, so two things. A, obviously now people who are very salesy, not going to win, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be empathetic. You got to be human and nice. And what you really should supposed to be selling and tell a story and all those things. Two, you also got to look at the other side of it. You still, we all got to still feed our families and do what we've got to do and business got to keep on going. And that, that means selling to bigger companies or smaller so get everybody going. So you have to do it. There's no, to get us out now doing lead gen or anything like that is a little harder to do right now, but that's okay. You, you still got to have long-term vision. So for us, we're looking at it, you know, three, four five, six months from now. Right. But, you know, making those seeds in now um, just to make sure we have it. So making sure that that work works. Now, if somebody comes up right now and says, hey, we need to do this. Sure. Obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to be trying all over. You still got to sell. You still got to survive. So however that is. So, I mean, everything which you've said, I'd say would have worked perfectly fine six months ago pre-COVID. It's almost like, I think the hard sell tactic has been dying a painful death for ages now. So like, I, I think, you know, this whole idea of like being authentic and speaking to your customer with some empathy, like, again, it's not a COVID thing. Like, I, I'd say, would you agree that like this whole situation has sort of accelerated a trend that was happening anyway? Right, right. You're supposed to do that, right? Um, it's just putting very upfront. That's why I said like, People are very salesy and just like hit the phone hard. They're not going to win right now because nobody has time for that. They're trying to survive, right? So people who have been selling, not really selling, just being curious and having a conversation is where it was always there. Right. I mean, kind of like what we're doing right now. Um, just <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's... So I guess like in terms of adapt adapting, it's, it may not just apply to your business, it could even apply to yourself. So if you are someone who you recognize as a very hard closer or like a very hard salesperson, maybe it is a good time to just time out a little bit and try to reevaluate how you connect with people because that's clearly like mm -hmm. how you should, how it should be right now. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's going to be hard um, and it's a longer sales cycle and even now it's going to be even longer. But um, there's ways to, to do it. And I think that's the best way to do it. So we've, we've, we've talked a little bit about connecting with people and doing lead gen. Um, so essentially, we're, we're, we're really saying now that like, don't stop your marketing. Yes, things have gone crazy, especially when cash flow becomes an issue. I think people that are cut spend really like pretty much everywhere they can, right? And like one of the... I think Google first thing that it. always goes is marketing, right? Exactly. Should it? Exactly. Yeah, it so, should. so it sounds like that's the advice here. Like, cut everything you can, but try to leave some marketing going. Don't just double down don't. on it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, that's any time there's a crisis like this or or there's marketing is down and and all that, uh, you should definitely double your marketing. Like, it shouldn't be slowed down. That's always the first thing that goes, and it makes no sense. Yeah, and. and I guess the market also really helps you out here, right? Like from what I've been hearing, Facebook ad costs, Google ad costs have been going down, especially with supply yeah. going up and with people cutting down on ad spend. So uh -huh. this could just be one of those times where you can really do a few more experiments, if you will. Mm -hmm. You can play with it, right? If you, if you can spend it, obviously. Um, but marketing is the, the place you should be pushing everything towards. And one of the areas which I found is that, I mean, I'm, like as an entrepreneur myself, you pre-COVID, like when, when you do business as usual, you kind of have a million things in your to-do list that you wish you could get done. And then sort of like the urgent stuff keeps happening. Mm -hmm. And one of the things which I've been reading quite a bit in terms of advice is that, look, if you've got some downtime, just cherish it. Um, maybe you can get those bigger projects that you just couldn't have time to do before. I don't think anybody really has downtime. First of all, we happen to be at home working through a crisis. It's not mm -hmm. working from home. This is different. Mm -hmm. um, most people have kids and a spouse that's also working and you're all working in the same space. That's true. Kids running around. Like you, there's a lot more to it. Yes, that, that people are like, well, you have time. You don't. 
because you're, especially if you have kids, right? You're teaching their kids at the same time. You're trying to run around and, and do all the work and trying to survive. And you actually are working a lot more. It, it's, it's different. Um, it's a different mindset. I, I think that's, that's an important. Trying to get. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I think when you have kids, so, you know, we've got a, a one and a half year old and I, I totally feel you on that. Um, but I, I guess, I guess it's like that age old thing about, you know, when you have pre kids, uh, time that you have available and post kids is just so different. Yeah, we're the we're the, we're on the pre side. <laughs> but as a leader, like you still have, you know, there's other urgent things you have to deal with. So you gotta look at your finances a lot more. You're still dealing with a lot, even though you're you're at one place. You know what I mean? So that's mm. everybody's like, well, you have more time. You don't. You you really don't. You're, you're trying to talk to more people. You're trying to talk to your team and making sure they're good. Like there's a lot of million things going on at the same time. That's a good point. So I guess, um, you know, what I was just saying there was probably not, not a good way of putting it because you're kind of adding more pressure on yourself when you're probably trying to do things to reduce the pressure. So right. if you, if you, if you are sort of really uh, cramped for time and there's nothing much you can do, then don't try to add even more to your plate. Exactly. So then I guess then the question is really all about prioritization, right? So, um, so from what you talked about, really just focus on your cash flow, make sure survival um, is okay, and then work on your marketing so that you're constantly like getting your brand out there and things like that. Um, you know, so what's next? So what, what, how, what's your, like, let's say the third priority where you should really think about? For us, uh, what's next? Uh, cash flow, uh, marketing, um, your first priority is actually your team, making sure they're, they're okay, right? Mm -hmm. And then everything from there. So my job is always making sure they're taken care of so that they can care of the clients. And that's their time. Um, which is interesting when you're in, you get shoved into this kind of crisis mode of, you know, are our clients, I don't have to, most of all the team takes care of the clients just fine and they're doing a bang up job and then have to step into things which is awesome like that's how you this is where mm -hmm. training of people step away and, and trying to give them room right making sure that every, they're fine the clients are okay but also giving them room to work is the biggest and then everything falls from that um you know and and the the other biggest thing is being very open and honest and you know about what's going on company financials you know all those kind of things yes there's, there's a lot of hard talks everybody's having them right you know um, so being open and it's just this is with the re the use the reality of now i i think that's a really good point i i saw that the ceo of gravity um i think he made he got on the news because he realized that I think he had some two really bad options. Like they were going to run out of money in a few months and there was no way he could raise money in this climate. And he essentially just got all the employees in a room and he just explained the situation saying, look, I don't want to take any of, I don't want to fire all you guys and I don't want to die. So what do we do? And he essentially involved everybody and they all sort of agreed, you know, subjectively they had a sort of a secret ballot kind of thing where they would all like write down a number they were willing to, reduce their pay with obviously he did the same thing and then just with this he managed to keep everybody on the team and extend the runway so that was pretty awesome right so you go through that process right um you know we did that too automatically like what's the worst case scenario and then what is the worst worst case scenario you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you already already go there um and then we just figure out and then and everything in between you know but if we do our good jobs well you know it's going to be an interesting time. I mean, to be fair, we started our company pretty much at the last recession. Right. <laughs> so you've been uh, burned quite a bit already. <laughs> so I've been through this um, in, in a weird way. But yeah, we started our company in a recession. So yeah, um, you know, recession was in 08. I had an agency before that. And then it became what is what the company is now and sumo has been around for 10 years as in may mm -hmm. what do you think about so so we've talked about like what you should be doing right now i think that's really really good advice um you know make sure that your team's happy and they're you've really been transparent you've figured out your cash flow you've got marketing going on um i think it's fair to say that with e-commerce 
given that all the behavior is sort of like moving online, um, do you think the future is something to look forward to? Is that something you're telling your clients that look, it, right now it sucks, but eventually more people are going to be buying online? Is that something which you're, you're uh, more? More people are going to buy online, but they're also the world is changing. Um, sorry, I know. Um, the world has changed. So, if you look at it, things that are on the back burner in a lot of places have mm -hmm. all of a sudden shut up to the front, right? So let's take telemedicine, right? It was a nice to have. It was just there. You know, some some uh, health insurance were letting you do it. All of a sudden, Tom was in a just forefront completely, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you go to a doctor's office anymore? Mm -hmm. I actually had I had two doctor's visits literally doing this, and I did it online, and it was fine. Like, they checked it. So did you have to take your own temperature and tell them? Or, like, how did that work? That, that's no, I had to tell you it was something else, but, like, okay. um, I could have gone through. It was just fine. So, like, the same thing with, with you know, Thomason or, um, you know, buy online, pick up, pick up curbside was kind of rattling around, was coming up, and all of a sudden it's a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Online grocery. Um, all the things that were slowly coming into play, all of a sudden are forefront and faster, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody got, yeah, there's hiccups, obviously, because nobody's really prepped for that, but it's happening. So I think some things will die off and some things will just progress because technology makes it so. Um, so it's really like a classic disruption event here, right? It's almost as big as like the, say the internet coming, um, the mm -hmm. like behavior that was already starting has just suddenly become the only way you can do things right now. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, even this, right? Even, even call like to me, Zoom calling and stuff like that is easy because we use it every day. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole bunch of companies that jumped into the video conference and, and they're doing it and they're doing it fine. Yeah. Are they having trouble adjusting? Sure. Everybody is. But I think there's a, there's, you know, there's an easy, it, it, people will get used to it. Um, mm. I, I think that's a, so, so I guess you, you don't want to get too bogged down by trying to predict things, but um, you, if you can sort of keep your eyes peeled and look at what's happening around you, then you're going to be able to adapt a lot, a lot faster. Right. So um, mm -hmm. How would you advise someone who's trying to think about this? Like, would you, would you maybe, like for instance, if I've got a big enough site, maybe the kind of search keywords in my own site are changing. Like, are there like certain data points that I could be looking at to try to see what, how I should sort of skate to where the puck is gonna be? Sure, I mean, the, depends where, you, like right now, depends what you're selling, right? If yeah. you're in the, in, the, in the sort of needed or, you know, the number one item that people are were looking at is like a week no. Let's list those guys out. I don't think I've got no, no. But like no, yeah. seriously. But like, but if you think about it, the one of the moment was actually uh, bread machines, right? Because everybody's making bread. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like you know. But there's a whole bunch of stats that you can look at what's coming up, what it is, and then like fashion was like has a bounce back too all of a sudden. So mm -hmm. looking predictor, you don't like yeah. Telehealth was around. And people are like, all right, this is going to be a future at some point. But then you get, you know, things like insurance companies and people want to be a doctor's office and visits and stuff like that. All of a sudden that has changed because you got forced into it. But that was eventually going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So things are, have come out for the past two years. Um, I think there's a predictor there and watching, watching what new tech comes out. Like, I don't know, something like AR, right? Where mm -hmm. Ikea was one of the first ones that had the whole furniture things, mm -hmm. but the new like tablets and stuff like that make it easier and sure. more effective, right? And all these other people are now doing it faster and faster. You know, VR was like this fun thing. Is it going to change to a meeting thing where we can do this in VR? That's more sort of touchy feely. You know what I mean? Like it's that there. Pretty, pretty crazy, but yeah, I see where But no, but think about it. So if we had this yeah. conversation on, on, on VR, um, it could be more integrated and just the sense is there, right? Yeah. Um, where you don't have to meet in person, but you still have that feeling in person. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be forefront. So there's no real prediction there. It's just more of watching what is happening in the market and what goes faster. But that's anything, right? You look at social media stuff. TikTok, two years ago, three years ago, was nowhere, but it was coming. 
and now it's like pretty big. Everybody uses it, especially at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Every, just it's predictable. It, it just keeps on rolling. Like you look at go back in the days of, oh, we had the radio and all of a sudden TV came out and then TV became big and then social media came out and then network. Like, right. It just repeats itself. Um, so the there's seems sort of like, like an extinction event, so to speak, of old stuff. Yeah. And it's just getting to be a lot faster than it was. Right. It's like radio. Did it really disappear? It didn't. It's still out there. But last time, when was the last time you listened to a radio? Sure. Well, I don't I mean, even listen to my car anymore. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can't remember the last time I bought a television. I, I, I just don't have a TV. Um, I, and I haven't owned one for probably a decade now. And I've, I've never missed We it. do, but we don't have cable, right? We still stream everything. And I like right. to watch, you know, end of the night, sometimes, you know, stuff that's just there because you want to turn your brain off. But, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> TV is a great way to turn your brain off. Um, yeah, but you know, I was thinking more of sort of more tactical changes. Like these are like really big, big changes, right? I think like in terms of um, where I was really going with this is that, you know, people talk about A-B testing and doing tests on their site and like trying to check performance and blah, blah, blah. Is it like, would you say this as a time to be doing more of that? Because maybe because behavior is changing so much that your assumptions pre-pandemic may not be correct anymore. Sure. So on the smaller side, the problem of a lot of A-B testing or analysis, analysis and data and stuff like that, you should do it. You should do it all. The mm -hmm. problem is just who is going to do it, who is going to analyze it, who is going to do those things. Now, if you have it, you can look at your data and where it was and see if you can A-B test certain things, but small things. Don't do over – like the problem I think a lot of people have is they overdo it, right? You have to test small little hypotheses and test them for a bit and not do too much. Um, you can still do it, um, but I think from from that perspective, I'm looking at little tests. You know, would it be A/B testing? Would it be some marketing? Would it be just test it out? Um, I think it's like we said earlier with ads and things like that. You can test them pretty well. Yeah, so that sounds like a really good strategy where you use your ads to test different hypotheses of different products that you think are going to do well. Like for instance, you know, we talked about how tops are doing so much better than bottoms. So maybe you, you forget those deals where you get a top and a bottom together and you just really put the tops on. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. and then, uh, yeah. Just to finish up quickly, if thing. that works, yep. you could put that on your website and you could like do an AB test of your old homepage with maybe a new featured collection or something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, but little tests don't over, I think when people get in trouble is like, you know, they, they set up all this whole, you know, funnel of craziness and, and they're like, well, then this is not working. It's like, well, why just spend that time doing it instead of just test pre-testing it. Right. Um, and I guess it comes I have the same, I have the same, sorry about that. Uh, I have the same thing with people going, I have a product I want to sell online, but I want this whole big chimp stem. It's like, why? That makes no sense. You right. know, put a page together, see if people actually want it. Right, right. And, and I guess like just tying that to the earlier point about like this whole downtime thing not being true, um, I guess you also want to be careful about not filling up your plate even more with stuff. Mm -hmm. So, because um, I think there's quite a lot of advice right now going out there on what to do during this pandemic. I don't think there's a shortage right now of people weighing in with opinions. So maybe another thing is just really focus on your prioritization, right? Like try to figure out like in terms of your, your business, what's going to really move the needle and just try to stick your A-B testing or whatever you decide on that, you know, particular issue. Right. So it's, it's basically survival. You know, that's your priority. Um, making sure you have enough cash and runway and things like that. And then testing, can you bring more, more sort of sales to your sites? Um, in however you fashion, you can do that. So, right. um, it's probably not the time to try to redo or big giant numbers of platforms either, mm -hmm. unless you're in the middle of one. <laughs> I mean, so, so we talked quite a bit about people with an existing e-commerce platform, you know, in that middle segment, so to speak. Um, the people I think um, I'd say like probably more concerned about are the ones who have never been online to begin with and are finding themselves forced to be online, right? Like yeah. that brick and mortar store that, you know, I don't know, the butcher down the street that like suddenly mm -hmm. has zero foot traffic and mm -hmm. has to survive. 
Um, and, I, and I think there's been a lot of opinions going, you know, around like what they should do. I know a lot of agencies are uh, stepping in to help these guys get online. But like, do you have a take on this? So if someone really comes up to you and says, hey, like I, I don't really have an online presence, maybe I've got a Facebook page up, but not really. Um, you know, what should I do? Should I just stay like this or like how do I, because e-commerce is tough. It's get, not... your, get your stuff online. Um, <laughs> yes, it's very tough. Um, I think if somebody has never been on, I think going to a good consulting firm, um, and this is not a plug for us, but it's more of having good advisors of doing it, not just going right. to a developer online and going, can you put this together for me? Because what's going to happen is they're going to waste a lot of time. Yes, they can put a site together, but you won't have a full strategy on anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because what I will tell you, say it's a butcher, as you said, like, well, what are you selling? What do you want to sell, right? Are you selling all your products or you're only selling top grossing ones, right? right. You're selling the five grossing steaks, for example, in a butcher, right? Like this is a grossing thing. That's what I want to do. Um, then it's a different strategy than going, well, I have 300 products and I want to sell them all. Sure. Right. Two different things. Like I'm selling these five, fine. I'm going to put PayPal buttons on or uh, Shopify actually has uh, Shopify buttons they can get for cheap. Mm -hmm. And then your whole product in the back end is easy, right? You have 300 products. It's a different story. That's a different strategy. So mm -hmm. I think, and, and, and this is just goes, no matter what company this is, people get in trouble with this is that they, they, a lot of agencies will lead with platform first. They're like, no, you, we only sell Magento or we only Shopify, so you should be on it. We don't do that. We look at the business itself. What is the solution for the business? And then we look at what the right, right strategy for what they have, what they want to sell, what, um, what kind of budget they have, right? They have a small right. budget. I'm not going to put them on something like Magento, which requires a lot more work you know, across the board. Maybe it's just a simple solution of literally just a PayPal button. And there it is. It's a form with it. So there's, there's definitely strategies for this. So if right. uh, somebody has never been online, finding a, a advisor that will help you, finding that knows e-com, understands every single piece of it, um, is very important. And I, and I think that platform question is really important because um, I think that's where a lot of people get stuck because you ask somebody about their business and their story and what products they want to put, put online and things like that. I bet they've got a pretty decent idea of what they want to do with that. They probably don't know how to translate that to an online strategy, but I think you know, these questions are going to be okay. Sure. But, um, and again, like I'm, I, I know that this is a tough question to answer off the bat because it's very case specific. But do you have any sort of like guidelines to share on like what platforms work well generally for like, you know, what use cases? <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of. Um, and, and this is just sort of from looking at everything is like, if you're a small, small shop that needs to get online really quickly, Shopify is the only answer right now. Mm -hmm. um, WooCommerce is way too difficult because it's up with WordPress. Um, BigCommerce is okay too. Um, you can actually... Shopify to me, that for those kind of reasons is that um, you could get away with um, Squarespace actually has e-commerce built into it too. Mm -hmm. And so does Wix. Um, I just think Shopify for that sort of strategy is pretty easy to use. Um, it's a bit like a Swiss Army knife now, right? Because they've got so many apps. I mean, like they were actually the first. They have so many apps. Like, yeah. Yeah, once you get into like bigger stuff and very complex things, then it just makes no sense because you have to build a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, we actually have a client that uh, is not that complex, but um, their end client we're working with with a third party um, requires that the data, their data, customer data is not stored anywhere. Um, Shopify can have it, but nobody else can have it. The problem with Shopify, it shares that data across the board. So we have to build all the plugins separately on ourselves without <laughs> having, right. So you can't, right. you, we actually have to build special plugins for them to do that. So you, you kind of go through that process of figuring out, like I said, it, it's the right thing for the right person. Um, for me, Shopify is just easy for someone like small. Like you said, that butcher example, yeah, yeah I would, the only thing I would go to. So it sounds like it's a bit of like an 80-20 thing, right? Like 80% of your use cases, you're probably going to be fine with Shopify and then 20% where you're doing something like slightly di very different, then, then that's when you need to do a bit of more homework. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously those outliers where, you know, there's certain clientele that has a very complex big business, mm -hmm. but 
they want to sell certain products and they're at like the spikes of it where right. Shopify is going to be great because their hosting is awesome, right? They do yeah. that whole scaling thing really quickly. You know, they might sell, you know, you might be a big business with four products, but it makes sense to do that because the scalability of it is easy. Yeah, you've got Black Friday or Cyber Monday or what have you. Yeah, you don't have to but there also it. is, yeah, there's also the opposite side of it is like we know one or two people that run a hundred to two hundred million dollar uh, businesses on mm -hmm. top of Magento open source, right? The free product, but they know their hosting is fine and it's running just smoothly. So there's everything in between. Like I said, there's every gamut of that. That's why we don't do platform first for small businesses that never been online. Yeah, Shopify is probably the best best shop. Awesome. Hey, this is really great advice, Bart. Um, you know, like, what would you like? How would you summarize? Um, the, the advice, like, so for a small business um, entrepreneur listening right now, like what are the top three takeaways for them? Um, obviously, make sure you can survive. So that's looking at your people, looking at cash flow, looking at all those things. Um, and then turn around and look at your whole business and see where you can sell other things that what your business sells that right now can't. Um, that's the two biggies. And then just look at your potential project that you had on burner on the back burner that maybe makes sense right now mm -hmm. awesome but i'm like i think just last lastly um i think what you said sound really interesting especially for the people who are on brick and mortar stores who might need some extra advice i'm sure they'd love to get in touch with you how would you prefer that they do that Oh, find you i'm bart Moraz on everything else or sumo heavy on everything else so on all the <laughs> socials pretty easy to find Awesome. Hey, thanks a lot, Bart. Great having you on. Thank you.